Okay, so what we've been talking about is that there are two major motivators in life. There is pain and pleasure. And we say that we move towards pleasure and away from pain. Very, very important. But what a lot of people don't understand is in NLP, this aspect of NLP that we've been working on called submodalities, are internal representations of experience. So remember what that is in essence. Remember that how we experience things on the inside lets our brain know whether we should move towards that thing or away from that thing. So the example that we've been working with is Susan's example of she really loved Coca-Cola, like loved it to the point of it was felt like an addictive response. And so when I asked Coke, um, Susan, I said, well, if you to go inside and begin to think about Coca-Cola now, what do you get on the inside? Remember that she said it was big and bright and colorful. It was like the Coca-Cola can seemed larger than life size and it was three dimensional and it was color. And there was even some movement of the droplets of the cold water down the Coke uh, can. And then she said there was weirdly a sound to it, even though there wasn't really, it was being opened. As she saw it, she kind of heard that classic kind of Coca-Cola as the can would open. There was also a sensation and she felt a sensation up in her chest that was like moving her towards it and a salivation in her mouth. And she also had a voice inside her head on the right hand side of her head, remember? That's right here, not the left, no, remember, mirror it round, on the right hand side of her head. But basically said, that's gonna taste so delicious. That's gonna taste so delicious. So we've got a number of internal experiences that are really obviously in this case, letting her brain know that Coca-Cola is something that she is pleasurable and she wants to move towards it. If it's color, it's three-dimensional, it's right up in front of her, it's slightly larger than life size, bit of movement of the cold water going down it, the sound, this voice on the inside of their head saying, oh, that's really gonna taste delicious, and this urge and sensation in the mouth, you can kind of see that if the body is doing that in response to seeing Coca-Cola in the real world, she's gonna to wanna to grab it and have it. Because remember, we were talking about, we live in a stimulus response world, like Pavlov and the Pavlovian response. And the world is one big stimulus, and then we respond to it. Where people get it wrong is they try and control the stimulus. But that's pretty tricky, because things happen. Remember our other example of uh, Ben, who had the spider phobia. And you know, he kept on saying, yeah, but I just don't want spiders to exist. I don't want spiders to exist. Well, yeah, that's a fantasy, that's hypothetical. And as we kind of joked about, well, if we didn't have spiders, then the problem with that is, well, we wouldn't be alive as humans because spiders are needed to take care of all the insects because if spiders weren't around, there'd be too many insects. And you know, there's too many insects, we wouldn't be able to breathe and we would die. So we kind of owe spiders our life. But here's the thing, knowing that wonderful bit of factual knowledge didn't resolve his fear of spiders. Because once again, when he thought about spiders, woof, big, and so on and so forth. But the point that I'm making is that the spider is a stimulus. And you can't go around just killing all the spiders. What you can do is recognize that the response is in you. Your response of feeling fearful or agitated or phobic or that urge to run away, that's your response. And that is something that you can take control of. And so, remember, stimulus response. So let's go back once again to Susan and a Coke can. A Coke is just Coke. And to many people, they look at Coca-Cola and go, that's disgusting. Many people are neutral. But in her case, her brain had been patterned to look at that Coca-Cola, that stimulus, and respond in this certain way. And so all we did, which is extraordinary if you think about it, is we asked her to think about a drink that she was kind of indifferent about, a drink that she just didn't have any interest in. And remember that she said tea, okay? She said tea. I went, okay, so if you think about tea, how is that? And she goes, oh, like this. I went, yeah, I get that. But if you think about it on the inside, how do you kind of represent tea? And she went, well, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of over there and it's kind of, picture feels a bit flat and there's no movement to it, no sound to it. And I just have this kind of neutral feeling inside. So we can see quite clearly, and even here in a language, quite clearly, that there's a very different way in which she's representing the Coke and representing the tea. It's got nothing to do with the Coke can itself or the cup of tea itself. It's how they're represented. 
And in this case, the T represented just flat and black and white and in a location down here and this flat feeling, no sound. That represents to the brain kind of indifference. I'm not into it. So all that we did is we had to get the representation of the coat can, move it down to where the T was. We don't need to worry about the T anymore, just how the T was represented. Moved it down to that location. We made it life size, black and white, flat over here. And we took the voice, actually there wasn't a voice for this one. It was just, there was no sounds. We just kind of got the voice and just shrunk it down. So there was no voice. And then she, strangely enough, had this unconscious sense of this neutral feeling. Now, of course, you can kind of get a sense that most people, if they saw something and it was just kind of black and white, in this case, flat, kind of 2D, kind of life size, over here, no voice inside of the head saying that you should have it, and this flat feeling, you can tell very clearly that that is the brain saying, yeah, indifferent, not into it. So, once again, because we're going to practice this in a moment with all of the submodality skills that you have. Remember that all we're really doing is telling the brain, are you into it and you want to move towards it? Are you neutral to it and couldn't care? Or are you averse to it and you want to move away from it and you really don't want it? And when we represent things internally, how we represent them tells our brain, do we want to move towards it, are we neutral to it, or are we going to move away from it? All good? You've got your pads? Reminded you of the exercise? Okay, let's get it on.